In this video, I will be teaching you how to solve modulus inequalities. So in my last video, I showed you how to solve modulus inequalities where it was only on one side. So for example, if you had the absolute value of x plus 5 is greater than 1, you're only taking the absolute value of one side of your equation. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about how to solve modulus inequalities where there is modulus on either side of the equation. So let's say, for example, that we have the absolute value of 2x plus 1 and this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of 3 minus x. And we won't be able to solve this in the same way that we solved our last inequalities where there was only an absolute value on one side. So I'll be showing you the method of how to solve for questions like this. So if you recall, or a general rule is that the absolute value of anything, so let's say the absolute value of p whole squared is essentially the same thing as just normally squaring that number. So the absolute value of p squared is equal to p squared. And we see like if we take the absolute value of negative 2 squared, which is the same thing as 2 squared, will be equal to negative 2 squared, which and they're both equal to 4. So anyway, when we solve these equations, we want to apply the same rule. So what we'll be doing is we will be squaring both sides of our equation in order to get rid of the absolute value signs. So we can square 2x plus 1 and the absolute value of 3 minus x, excuse me, and then we can rewrite this as 2x plus 1 whole squared is greater than or equal to 3 minus x whole squared. So all we need to do now is just open this up and solve for our inequality. And as you've probably already noticed, we're just going to get a quadratic inequality over here. So this opens up to be 4x squared plus, plus 4x plus 1 is greater than or equal to, this is 9 minus 6x plus x squared. So this should give us 4x squared and then minus x squared plus 4x plus 6x and then plus 1 minus 9 giving us a final answer of 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 and now we need to factorize it. So 3 and 8 gives us a value of 24 and we can use 12 and 2 I believe so plus 12 minus 2 so let's factorize this and this is greater than or equal to 0 I probably should have mentioned that earlier greater than or equal to 0 it's also greater than or equal to oops and this is also greater than or equal to 0 so when we factorize this, we get 3x squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 8 is greater than or equal to 0. Um, 3x into x plus 4 minus 2 times x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. 3x minus 2 times x plus 4 is greater than or equal to zero. So this is the equation that we get. And this isn't our final answer, however, because we don't have x by itself. So what we need to do now is we need to graph this in order to visualize where our graph will be positive or greater than or equal to zero. So let's say that we have our x and our y-axis over here. So our y-axis and this right here is our x-axis. Our graph will cross the x-axis at the point x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 2 over 3 and that's using these two values that we have over here and our graph will be a smiley face because the coefficient of x squared is positive as we can see right here so and here as well so we'll have a smiley face so it'll look like this going on and on now looking back at our equality, we want to find the points where this graph is either greater than or equal to zero. At this point we see it becomes greater than zero, so all of these values of our graph are positive, 
or greater than zero. On the left as well, after negative four, all of these values are positive. And in between these two, all of these values right here are negative. So what that means is that from the point x is equal to two over three and increasing, our graph will always have a positive value and therefore will be greater than or equal to zero. And from negative four going to the left or becoming more negative, our va the value of our graph or the y value will always be positive or greater than zero once again. So we can write out this inequality. We can write that on the left side over here, x will be less than or equal to negative four, or as we see on the right side over here where it's increasing, x will be greater than or equal to two over three. And this is our final answer. And if you found this slightly confusing, I recommend that you watch my video on how to solve quadratic inequalities. I go in a bit more depth there and I go over a few examples as well so that could be helpful if you're finding this confusing. So anyway, let's look at one more example really quickly and then we'll be done. Let's say that we have the absolute value of x plus one is greater than the absolute value of x. And if you remember from what we did above, we simply squared both sides of our equation in order to get rid of the absolute value signs. So we can square this and we can square this. We'll get x plus one whole squared is greater than x whole squared. And we can simply solve this algebraically in order to find our final answer. So using this, we get x squared plus 2x plus 1 is greater than x squared. We can bring everything over to one side. So x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus x squared is greater than 0. And these two x squareds can cancel out, giving us an equation of 2x plus 1 is greater than 0. So we get 2x is greater than negative 1, and x is greater than negative 1 over 2. So this is our final answer. And in this case, we didn't have to do as much as we did up here because our x squareds canceled out. Therefore, we didn't have to solve any quadratic equations. So just as a quick recap, when we're solving modulus inequalities where there are absolute values on both sides of the equation, what we want to do is we want to square both sides of the equation in order to get rid of the absolute value. And then we simply solve it algebraically in order to factorize our quadratic ex expression as we have over here. And then we draw the graph in order to see where our graph is greater than or in some cases less than zero.